Hello students, I'm Amani Sharma, your educator. I warmly welcome you all on this YouTube channel where we are going to discuss today the previous year questions related to the unit of research aptitude. Now you guys must be preparing for your examination and you know that how much importance does this particular unit hold and of course even if we try to talk about the weightage, the weightage of questions from each and every unit is roughly 5 questions, right? That is equal to 10 marks that could help you gain your GRF as well. Right? So let's just quickly dive into the video and see what are the questions which I have brought forth from June 2023 paper, which was a recent one. The first question is, according to the UGC Regulations Act 2018, on plagiarism, similarity of 42% refers to which are the following levels of plagiarism. Now, the approach to these uh, questions would be, you can pause your videos whenever you see a question. I'll be discussing the answer, right? So, you can pause the screens, know the answer, type it out for your own self and all. The answer to this particular question is option C, that is level now, whenever you are sitting for such an examination, whenever you are appearing for your PhD interview, you want to write your synopsis and all, you need to know this particular thing that what do we know as, what do we know as plagiarism? Now, plagiarism is something which is mostly related when you are, uh, you know, not citing the works of any particular person whom you have referred to in your research paper, thesis, dissertation and all. So, let's just say you are writing your research paper, you have quoted, you have read a particular report, you noted the particular statistics from that particular report and now you are not even citing the person whose report you have referred to, whose report you have read and incorporated in your thesis or dissertation, right? Now, there is this very particular thing that comes to your mind that, of course, when the person the PhD, you will sit for the PhD, viva and all, your paper, thesis and dissertation ke liye, wo plagiarism ka check hota hai, right? And during that plagiarism check, it turns out that you have, you know, copied the content, you have not cited the content from the paper you have read and all. That is going to lead you into much and much trouble leading on the percentage, you know, depending on the percentage from this particular levels. Now, what is plagiarism? I told you, plagiarism is something when we try to talk about when we are not giving the due credit to the person whose uh, reports, articles, journals we have referred to. It could refer to your books. It could refer to anything that you are, you know, reading through, you are citing on your paper. Correct? So, level 0 means less than 10% similarity, no consequence. It means 10% plagiarism is, um, you know, wo acceptable hai. Moving to level 1, 10 to 40 percent similarity, you'll have to resubmit your paper, thesis, dissertation within the next 6 months. 40 to 60 percent similarity, 1 year ban on resubmission. For 1 year, you will not be able to resubmit your PhD thesis or paper. Correct? So, it's really important you cite the people. 60 percent se zyada similarity hai. Your program registration will be cancelled and there are certain acts under which you can even uh, be, you know, fined and all. You will not be able to do your PhD ever in your life again. Correct? So, you need to be really very careful that you are not asking someone else to write your research paper. You are not, uh, you know, you are citing the people that you are referring to, people, works, books, etc. Correct? The next question is, the question of whether a measure that is devised for a concept really does reflect the concept that it is supposed to be denoting. It relates to what? The answer to this question is option A, that is measurement validity. Measurement validity tries to talk about when you are taking a tool, you are taking a, in an instrument, right? And you are seeing that particular tool or instrument is measuring what it is supposed to measure. Let's just look at the example here. The example that I've tried to incorporate in the particular slide is about a thermometer. Now, you all know that a thermometer is needed when you want to measure the temperature. You will not be able to measure your weight using a thermometer. So, you need to be really very careful that you are using the right tools, right instruments, etc. to make your research valid because validity is an important characteristic of research. 
What about the other options? Here we have ecological validity. Ecological validity refers to when whatever you have done in your research that could be applied in real life natural settings as well. Correct? So if you are, you have taken some memory test in a laboratory, you were a part of a sample, right? You were, a, you know, supposedly some memory tests were taken in a laboratory and later on, when you move again back to your real life, you are supposedly memorizing certain things that yes, of course, aaj ki to-do list mein, I'm supposed to get these many things from the market to my home, correct? So how you are now using that memory test and all and how you, how well are you doing in your life in real life setting, that is ecological validity and one important fact to note down here is that ecological validity is a subtype of external validity. Then we have internal validity. Internal validity refers to how, you know, whatever variables are there in your research, they are only the ones which are affecting each other by keeping the other constant variables as they are. Right? So let's just say, if we try to talk about a new drug, a new medicine, and we want to check its effectiveness, but I want my patients to take the same diet that they usually take in their daytime, nighttime, etc. I want them to, uh, you know, exercise as much they do in their daily lives and all. These factors will be controlled by me as a doctor. The only factor that will be changed, manipulated would be the medicine that I'm taking, you know, giving them, sorry, because of the fact that I want to see how the medicine is affecting the patients positively, negatively negatively etc correct so that i will know only ki ye medicine ki wajah se hi ho raha hai then we have the next type that is known as external validity ecological validity is the subtype of external validity now in external validity we want to generalize the findings we want to see whatever we have found through found out through the samples and all in our study how valid is it, you know, how beautifully it is replicated or applied or generalized to a larger subset, right? So, from a small town, you have done some research on a small town group of people. Now, you want to apply the same thing on a larger group of people in a larger city, correct? And if the results come out to be true, it means that your research is externally valid as well. Moving to the next question. Among the following types of sampling techniques, which one is also known as judgmental sampling? The answer to this particular question is option D, purposive sampling, which is a subtype of non-probability sampling. The three of them, quota, quota is also from non-probability Convenience is also from non-probability. Cluster is from probability. Right? So, we have different, different types. Majorly, we have non-probability and probability sampling techniques. These are the techniques which are required when a person wants to choose certain samples for his or her research. Right? So, non-probability may majorly it is the sample which is chosen is convenience based. Whereas in probability, because the name itself is suggesting that there is a probability. So, here the theory of randomness is there. Randomly chosen. Correct? Because we are dealing with a subtype, the answer is of non-probability. We need to know that there are major types a stands for accidental, C stands for convenience, P stands for purposive, right, which is also known as judgmental sampling, right, that was our question, right, judgmental sampling, also purposive sampling ka hi dusra naam hai, S stands for snowball sampling, and Q stands for quota sampling, right? We will be delving deep into the much and major concepts of these particular two types of sampling techniques in further videos as well, right? The next question now is, the property of data such that 
the research results apply to situations beyond the particular sample of individuals or items observed in a single research setting refers to what we have done the types of validity and the answer is amongst them only so i hope you will be able to answer this particular question the answer to this question is option d that is external validity if you try to read the question again situations beyond particular sample of individuals or item observed in a single research setting so agar single research setting se beyond ja raha hai externally ja raha hai then it's external validity so again the same example from a small town to a larger city larger group of people correct generalizability next question is arrange the following steps pertaining to quantitative research in correct order so you'll have to pause your screens take your time because yahan pe you'll have to put these steps in a uh, you know a particular sequence sequential manner mein the answer to this question is option b that is b e c a d whenever you are doing quantitative research you'll have to follow certain steps what are those steps how are you going to move forward with your research first of all you are going to choose the hypothesis you are going to have a question in your mind you are going to frame a hypothesis for the same hypothesis is a tentative statement which is believed to be true by the researcher usko aap question karke apni research ke through you want to answer that particular statement that is it true or false right second we have you will choose the particular research design quantitative mein how you are going to are you going to use surveys how are you going to collect the samples and all you will draw a blueprint of the research design before even starting your uh, you know research and all then we have c you will have to process the data after the collection of data through the research design and all you will process it right processing ke baad we have analysis data analysis you will now have to analyze the data you have first of all you are going to collect the data only then you will be able to analyze it so of course first data collection and process then analyzation of data then later on fifth step includes you are going to cite the findings you are going to write the findings whatever agar aapke hypothesis ke sath is it matching is it not matching right so you are going to agree and move forward with these particular steps in the quantitative research part then we have which of the following sampling methods the sample is also known as an accidental or a haphazard sample the answer to this particular question is option you will have to choose so you'll have to give me an answer to this particular question in the comment section below i will wait for sure for your answers to be dropped there right thank you so much and have a good day bye bye